In this video, I'm going to take a look at evaluating this integral, x to the fourth e to the 2x, but I'm going to use tabular integration by parts. So you could use integration by parts in this problem, no problem at all. It would just take quite a couple steps. You'd have to use integration by parts multiple times. So I'm going to show you this other method called tabular. Now, the, the way you want to do tabular is you want to designate a term f of x, and you want to designate another term g of x. Your f of x, you want it to be easily differentiated, meaning take the derivative multiple times very easily. Then your g of x, you want it to be a term that you could take the integral of very easily. So I'm going to set f of x equal to x to the fourth. And then I'm going to set my g of x equal to e to the 2x. So then what you do is you just run down the line of your f of x and take the derivative until you get to zero. So let's go ahead and do that. So the derivative of x to the fourth is 4x to the third. Derivative of 4x to the third is 12x squared. Derivative of 12x squared is 24x. And then the derivative of 24x is 24. Derivative of 24 is zero. So we've zeroed it out. Now we do the integral. So integral of e to the 2x, if you know your integral rules, you know how to in take the integral of e to the 2x, it should just be boom, 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 knock it out pretty quickly because this is going to be, so it's e to the ax becomes one over a, e to the ax, so it's one half e to the 2x. And then try to keep everything in a line, like don't try to, like try to keep everything pretty neat. Oh, you had coming from me. Um, so that's next one's going to be one fourth e to the two x. Next one's going to be one eighth e to the two x. Next one's going to be one sixteenth e to the two x. And then one thirty two e the two x just one half times that constant that was left off in the other one so here are all of our derivatives here are all of our integrals so now what the integration or the tabular integration is let me go underneath this yeah now it's enough room right here so the way this works then is you take each term so the first term here and you want to multiply it by that term so the first f of x times the second g of x and then you're just going to work your way down. Now, as you do that, though, you want to alternate signs starting with positive. So it's going to be positive and then negative. So let's just go ahead and start formulating this. So the first one's going to be x to the fourth times one half e to the two x. Next one's going to be minus four x to the third times one fourth e to the two x. And I know I see some simplifying that can be done. Don't worry. I see that. And then the next one is going to be plus. So it's going to be positive 12x squared over 8e to the 2x. I'll simplify everything after I go through and do this. Next one is going to be minus. So minus 24x times 1 over 16e to the 2x. I'm going to move this down. I'm going to get in my screen there. And then the last one going to be plus 24 over 32e to the 2x. So now you got to make sure you go through and simplify. And I know I just wrote it all out. So all I did is I did this times that, this times this, this times this, and then you alternate signs as you go through. If you want to simplify as you go through, that's fine. I just wanted to write it all out. So now I'm going to have x to the fourth over 2 e to the 2x minus the only thing that's going to simplify there is the fours are going to drop out x to the third e to the 2x 12 and 8 4 goes into 12 3 times 4 goes into 8 twice x to the second e to the 2x excuse me almost forgot about that 24 over 16, 8 goes into 24 uh, three times. 8 goes into 16 twice, so 3x e to the 2x. 
doesn't really write it as three halves. So just kind of write it like that. And then 24 and 32, 12 goes, or not 12, would be good. Uh, eight. I, don't know, I was like thinking sixes for some reason. Eight. Eight goes into 24 three times. Eight goes into 32 four times. E to the 2x. And notice I didn't do this term right here. See this? Like I didn't have like another term because it's just zero. That's the whole reason. So there's not like an extra term there. But that would be the answer. So if you think about this, like without the tabular method, you'd be doing integration by parts multiple times. Because if you remember integration by parts, it would be like u v minus the integral of u uh, v du. So then this portion, what would happen is on your first one, that wouldn't be able to integrate. So you have to do integration by parts again and then again and, and so on. So that's why we get so many terms because you're using integration by parts multiple times. So the final thing I want to say about this problem, though, is if you're sitting here and looking at this and you've just stumbled across this video and you're like, wait, why haven't I like known this method? Uh, like, why am I using integration by parts multiple times on any problem? Tabular method is only used in very specific scenarios. Very, very specific scenarios where you have the luxury of taking multiple derivatives just like that. And you have the luxury of taking integrals like that. So it's not used in any sort of problem that you could ever do. It's only used in very specific scenarios. So it's not something that's advertised a whole lot, only because it is very specific to very, uh, very specific scenarios. So that's why. Okay, so hopefully this problem helps you out and uh, good luck.